Did you know that T.G. Shepard had some fascinating stories about his wife, Kelly Lang, and friends Burt Reynolds, Jerry Reed, and even Elvis? Welcome back to the channel. Today we dive into the world of country music and Hollywood with a bona fide living legend. The 40-year-plus career of T.G. Shepard. T.G. has had encounters with some of the biggest names in entertainment. The pictures here tell some of the story, but what were these interactions like? I had a chance to talk to T.G. by telephone back at our local radio station about a show he had with another legend, T. Graham Brown, who is the newest member of the Grand Ole Opry. We'll find out how this all came together and more about T.G. Shepard next. We'll explore T.G.'s experiences with his wife, Kelly Lang, with Elvis, with Burt Reynolds, and some behind-the-scenes stories, too, as we talk with T.G. Shepard, Country Conversations with Cactus Jack. Good morning, World Radio. This is Jack. What can I do for you? Jack, T.G. Shepard, how are you? T.G. Shepard, I am honored, honored, honored to talk to you today. So I, I, since I introduced you for 40-some years, I kind of feel like I should let you do the <laughs> intro. <laughs> yeah, well, I've been very fortunate, and I'm I'm really glad to be coming up to uh, Kentucky. And coming to Kentucky. Opera. You haven't been with us before, have you? No, I think this is my first trip in there. I think, uh, and I have T. Graham Brown coming with me on the show. We have a lot of good shows at Kentucky Opry, and I'm really looking forward to an entertainer with 21 number one hits, countless charted recordings, <laughs> Billboard Top 100 of all time. I looked all this stuff up this morning. I knew, you know, I knew I always liked T.G. Shepard, and the male population that's listening to me wants to thank you for all the groundwork you laid as our wingman, <laughs> and also well, for for getting us out of trouble all those times. Well, I tell you what, it, it's been a heck of a ride for me. I, you know, when you say 21 number one records, Jack, I, I used to think if I could have one or two number ones, I'd be, you know, excited and honored, but I never dreamed of having 21 of them. But, but man, it's, it's been a heck of a ride. I'm loving what I do more today than I ever have. Just for me as an ordinary disc jockey, I am a raging fan. I mean, I, <laughs> I love your music, and I learned a lot of stuff today. I mean, you, we play you on the radio here every day. We're a classic country station, and uh, I looked on the list. We've got about nine of your 21 number hits, number one hits in rotation wow. right now, and they do run in and out Ooh. because there's so much material. But uh, where where do I start? I mean, I, I know you got a new project coming out. Can you tell us about the duet album with your wife? Well, with my wife, Kelly Lang, and I hope to bring her up there one of these days. Uh, we we did a, an album, Jack, many years ago called Iconic Duets, and it did so well through television, through Time Life. And uh, people kept saying, when are you going to do another one? Well, a couple of years ago, we went to work on tracking a new duet album, and we weren't in any hurry. You know, we wanted to make sure we... Uh, did a project that we could be proud of. And so we took two years to do this project and just finished it up. And it'll be coming out in uh, probably about eight weeks. And the title of the album is called Chemistry. And we just released a new single from that album called Addicted to You, which my wife Kelly wrote. So it's kind of exciting to have a, a new duet album coming with my wife. The the talent just it's amazing it speaks for itself she's been around I remember her from Ralph Emery a long time ago oh you do yes oh sir I, I'm a raging country fan I was raised in country music and I I'm not I kidding when I say that I'm a T G Shepherd fan I'm very serious about that no I can tell I can tell you are you just made my day Jack you really did no Kelly's Kelly's been around forever and she's you know she was a three time winner on Star Search with Ed McMahon yes sir. She had a, had a heck of a career, and uh, I don't know if I can get her to come up with me uh, when we play up there. Maybe I can get her up to do a song or two. I don't know. Maybe I can get her to come up with me. Well, the songwriters are my superheroes, and she's had a great career all the way through, but the songs, is, and for me, that's the poetry is what I love about it. And Yeah, yeah me too. 
for both of you, I actually, with so much stuff you've got behind you, you could just kind of step back and take it easy, but mm -mm. <laughs> you're busy now as ever. You got Elvis radio on Sirius XM. I actually heard that once, uh, once or twice. I don't have XM radio. I don't, I've got plenty of subscriptions, but I don't have that one. I may have to get one now, but, uh, then you got a busy tourist this year. You got to stop at the Kentucky Opry on the 27th then. What else is going on? I know you got the new album project you just talked about, and you got Country for a Cause. You want to talk about that a little? Yeah, Country for a Cause is just kind of the kickoff to CMA Fest each year. It, this year it takes place on June the 5th. We have over 20 major classic artists on the show, and we raise money for Vanderbilt Children's Hospital. And um, it's just our way of giving back and uh, CMA Fest usually starts on the 6th or 7th of June, and uh, we kick it off kind of this year with our show at 3rd and Lindsley uh, on June the 5th here in Nashville. And it's always exciting to be able to do something for charity. We're really big on helping people. Well, a couple of points here. I had a grandson in Vanderbilt with a uh, very serious pneumonia a couple of months ago, and uh, he was in the Vanderbilt Children's Unit. And whatever you had to do with that, well done. It's it's really a, a really well equipped, a good place for the kids and for the families. And uh, I also want to want to drop in here that I have a YouTube channel, and if you don't mind, I'll be using this interviewer and maybe some of your artwork from your website and your media. And uh, we call it Country Conversations with Cactus Jack. And on there, we'll have links to the tickets to Country That's for a, a Cause. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a little excited here, <laughs> trying to keep my thoughts together. Well, I I'm excited to have you run that on your YouTube channel, and I invite people to check out my YouTube channel, too, as well as follow us on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and, uh, you know, all the social platforms because it, we're really big on, on those social platforms. I think it's important for artists to kind of keep their finger on the pulse of the fans and because they let you know what they like and don't like. So I hope people will follow us on those. All right. Well, I'll put links to all of that on there as well. I, I go into a lot sure. of trouble with this, but uh, it's very rewarding for me. It's still a fledgling channel. It's trying to grow, but the folks that are into it are really enjoying that. We're keeping the uh, traditional entertainers, keeping them in, in everybody's mind. Well, thank God for people like you. I mean, really and truly, it is people like you, Jack, that keep uh, real music alive, uh, the music of our era in the 80s and 90s. And uh, we kind of owe you big time. You know, we we love what we do here. I'm I'm not going to get off in the politics of music, and there's there's you know that's plenty oh, yeah. of other people say that, and I like to stay positive. But I do have a question. Oh yeah, me too. My wife I'm and I have my wife and I have a tiny little performance uh, company, and I know how how cool it is for me. How what's it like to have a famous husband and wife team and uh, duet project, and you work with your kind of your love of your life every day? Is it? Well, you know, it, I'm, I'm really blessed to be married to a lady who understands what I do for a living because she does the same thing. And I come in off the road, and Kelly will ask me how the shows went. Like, I just got in from Texas yesterday, and uh, she said, how'd it go? And I said, it was great, and I had T. Graham Brown with me there, too. And uh, so she understands because most of the time she has played – the same stages and venues that I am playing now or have played in the past. And it's just really great to be able to be married to somebody and have them understand everything about the business and what I do. And I'd love to get that insight. I'm tickled to death to have that insight. Now you just released addicted to you and you got a tour schedule. this year. How many dates are you doing this year? Well, I'll do about 50 total. And that's about all I want to do. I'm on the road every week. In between that, I do the Opry. I'm, I'm doing the Opry Wednesday night, tomorrow night. So we, we stay busy. You know, we're either uh, in the studio or doing concert dates or in the Opry uh, or doing television. Uh, but I'll do about 50 this year, 50 more uh, from here on. Kentucky Opry is the one I'm most familiar with, although we do move around some. But at the Kentucky Opry, you're going to bring T. Graham Brown with you. What kind of a show do you have? Is this two separate shows, or do you all do you collaborate, or how are you going to do that at Kentucky Opry? It's two separate shows. Uh, T. will go on and do his show, and, and my band will be backing him. And uh, and then I'll come on and do a hour, hour and 15, uh, you know, after him, and 
Uh, but it's a fun show because, you know, it's over two hours of nonstop number one songs between he and I. And, and he's one of the great voices of country music of our era and such a nice guy. He just, uh, he's a Christian guy. I love his testimony that he gives on stage when he performs and his wife, Sheila is always with him. And so it's, uh, matter of fact, we're, we're flying out, uh, day after tomorrow, Thursday to Louisiana. We played Louisiana this weekend and then I go on down to Weirsdale, Florida and play there Saturday. But, uh, no, it, it'll be a show with a lot of uh, comedy, a lot of fun, and a lot of number one songs in it with T. Graham and myself. We both love music, and we love to make a difference in people's lives with a song and with music. And, uh, no, it, it's just my pleasure, and I'm, I sure hope everybody will come out and catch our show. It's always, you know, I think it's very important for an artist to take the time to sign autographs and thank everybody for coming to their shows. I, I would never miss a, an opportunity to uh, visit with the fans of, of, of our music after a show. I, to me, that's just as important as the show. Well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up at this point, I guess. But when I do one of these, I always, always try to remember to ask the person, what did I miss? Is there anything you want to get on the radio if you want to talk about that we have not covered during this uh, time together? Well, I think you've been pretty thorough. I'm very impressed, Jeff, that you have done your research so well on my life and my career. I leave this message with everybody that, I just hope that they'll take the time to come out. And, and I promise the people who come to the show, T. Graham and I on stage, there's no way that the people in the audience can have any more fun than we have. Because we both love what we do. It's not work with us. It's just a blessing and an honor to be able to sing for a living. I cannot wait to see the show. I always wrap up my daily radio show with this little message. God bless you. God bless the United States of America. Let's all join hands and pray for one another. And please, please, please come and see T. Graham Brown, T.G. Shepard. And thank you, sir. We'll see you soon. He actually saved my life at the age of 15. I was a runaway. I ran away from my home in Humboldt, Tennessee, to chase this dream. That God has let me finish it. It was an amazing journey, and it still is. And uh, I wound up living in the alleyways of Beale Street and eating out of garbage cans. And Elvis actually one night saved my life. I went to a skating rink. A friend of mine was working there and let me skate free. I had no money. I was homeless. I'm standing out in front of the skating rink. They come all the lights off on the building. Three Cadillacs pull up in front. The guy behind the lead car gets out from behind the wheel and walks over to me and with Elvis. He said, Where are you going? I said, Well, they're closing up the road and I'm leaving. He said, Oh, no. They're opening it up for me. He said, We play a little game in here called Kill. It's football on the skates. I'm a man short on my team. Would you come in and be on my team? Are you kidding me? You're Elvis Presley. Yeah, I'd be happy to. We went in there and we skated for like four hours to like about four or five a.m. And afterwards, I thought, well, this is it. You know, I met an office, got a chance to roller skate with me. He leaned over to me and he said, you're hungry. I said, I'm starving. Those days I was always starving. He said, come on, get in the car. We'll go up to Graceland, grab a bite to eat. I get in the back seat of the car, the Cadillac. And driving up the driveway of Graceland, a 15-year-old kid in the car, I kept pinching myself, thinking I was going to wake up at any minute. It was all going to be a dream. We went in and had the famous peanut butter and banana sandwich. I actually had four of them. I was starving. And that was the start of a friendship that lasted until the day he passed. 
When I started my own career, I was a record executive with RCA Victor Records. My real name was Bill Browder. And I got a contract from Barry Gordy, of all people in Motown, who was starting a country division. And he signed me to my first contract. Now here I am working for RCA, drawing a paycheck, recording for Motown, another record company, conflict of interest, unemployment was headed my way. So I changed my name from Bill Browder to T.G. Shepard to record under. And this next song of mine came out. It was my first number one of 21 number one. And Elvis used to run around Graceland singing this song all the time, never knowing that T.G. Shepard was Bill Browder. And it would freak me out. We'd be sitting in the Memphian Theater watching a movie, and all of a sudden we'd break into this song. Just couldn't believe it. Well, one day I hit the back door of Graceland, and I heard his voice. Bill? Yes, sir. You could have told me you were that shepherd guy singing that song. I said, yeah, but I couldn't tell you or anybody, especially you. I was afraid I'd lose my job at RCA. He said, you fool. Don't you know that I am RCA? <laughs> And here was the song that he wrote. Fan of country music. That was the one and only Burt Reynolds. And then the second guy was a guy that I was in business with. He would call me up and we'd buy baseball teams or my hotel with my restaurants. And every time he called and I invested with him, I'd lose a fortune. <laughs> so finally, I just quit taking Jerry Reed's phone. <laughs> he was a horrible businessman. But what a kicker and what a singer and what a songwriter. And I, uh, the third friend in the movies, in that movie was the guy that played the part of Little Enos, Paul Williams. And his brother, Mentor Williams, was married to Lynn Anderson, okay? And he was a song plugger. And he called me up one day and he said, Hey, Teach, if you're looking for one of them story songs, I'm telling you, I have found it. If you record it, I promise you it'll be a number one. Well, he was right. See if you remember this one. I want to meet some of the greatest musicians in the ever graced the stage on keyboards and vocals. He was with a group, a hit group a few years ago called Emerson Drive. Great, great singer musician, Mr. Dale Wallace. On <laughs> percussion is one of the greatest singers. You hear all those high harmony parts in the show tonight. And of course, that was last week. <laughs> He is uh, one of the greatest percussionists of all time. He also hails from Music City. Make welcome the one and only Mr. Rick Wright. Hey, Rick. Hey, Rick. <laughs> Bass guitar and vocals, you probably already recognized him tonight. Because without his cowboy hat on, you can't tell that he's really Alan Jackson. <laughs> He looks like it, don't you? <laughs> he is, uh, he's been there a long time. He's played with a lot of incredible entertainers through his career. And I'm honored to have him playing with me on, on my shows. From Nashville on bass and vocals, Mr. Donnie Delosier.
And in the band, there's always that one guy that's the prodigy. I mean, he is just, words cannot describe his talent. He is the newest member of my group. I'm going to tell you a little bit about him. Not only is he a great singer and a great guitar player, his dad plays drums for Clint Black. Big money. But his mother, wow, what a singer. Years ago, McCarter's, I don't know if you remember them or not, but they were a the group, sister group, sister group. I think your mother came up here tonight, didn't she, Evan? Yeah. Where is one of the greatest voices that I have always loved hearing sitting in the room tonight? The one and only is Jennifer McCarter. Where are you, Jennifer? Right. Hey. Hey. Ah, what, <laughs> what are you going to start singing again? Oh, you ready right now? <laughs> 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 convincing her that she needs to come back and start recording again because it's uh, it's time somebody heard this great voice again. Jennifer, so glad to have you here tonight. Thank you very much. And I'll play with you. The guy I'm talking about over here is the one and only Evan Hall. You'll never escape. Everything else should be fine. If you need a tilt, just loosen that a little and we'll go up and down. Love you, brother. Take care, Jack. See you. All right, let me get you. I'd have holes in for I appreciate everything you did for us on the radio. I love the show. 
Thank you, sir. And uh, I appreciate you. Oh, we're glad that you came out. And without uh, you, there wouldn't be any us. Well, we did look at your YouTube channel. Okay, I, I didn't good. know that you had one. I was really yeah. impressed. Uh, we, uh, I'm actually going to, if you don't mind, I'll send you some of this. Sure. You can I'd love uh, see what you think. Thank you. thank you for everything you do, thank you. and thank you for the tour. Thank you for being so good to us. And thank you. Thank hopefully, you Clay liked to book people for next year. Uh, you know, that's where I met T was last last year when he was here. So thank we'll you very much. Thank God you. bless you, brother. God bless you. To sum it up, T.G. Shepherd has had some unforgettable actions with his wife Kelly, with Burt Reynolds, with Elvis, and with some other folks too. He's still going strong. Just today, we got the word that T.G. surprised the audience at the Grand Ole Opry with a duet performance of Party Time featuring Kid Rock. If you want to see more from T.G. Shepard, be sure to check his tour schedule at tgshepard.com. The link is down below. And take in Country for a Cause, June 5, 2024, and every year in Nashville. He'll be there with his wife, Kelly, and with T. Graham Brown, and with a cast of thousands. If you enjoyed hearing T.G. talk about his life and career, if you liked his stories, please like, share, subscribe, and share your favorite celebrity encounters below. And check out our other content. There's lots of stuff here. Interviews, cars, charitable causes, interesting variety here. Whatever strikes your fancy, you might find it here. Country Conversations with Cactus Jack. And thanks again.